Hey, this is the second part. I am Sheriff Quadri. I'm Jimmy, this is a good morning. That's right. You can watch us live on Facebook and on YouTube. Nigeria Info 99.3 is how you can be a part of this program. If you like to watch, yes, you can watch on Facebook and on YouTube. Just search for Nigeria Info 99.3. Uh, let's begin uh, from uh, this story here in the Vanguard newspaper, page 8 of the Vanguard. has a story here. Agitation for Yoruba Nation laughable. DHQ. Okay, so I mean, we, we still have to, we can't take a leg off the pedal um, in following this um, agitation story because only God knows where it's going to lead us to. But uh, uh, the DHQ described it as laughable, and which I also thought that the whole process itself was laughable. But they raised the alarm that terrorists and their sympathizers were planning to blackmail the military following its onslaught on insurgents. Okay, uh, and uh, speaking yesterday, the di Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, said the agitation has further pointed out how the insecurity ravaging many parts of the country is self-inflicted. And so that, that was his... Um, so there's a, there's a writer here that says that terrorists were planning to blackmail the military. That is one. Then the other part of the story talks about why we demolished Abiola Onitiri's residence of the state government. And I'd like you to listen carefully and follow the logic and ask yourself if what I'm reading makes any sense. It says the Oyo state government has justified its decisions to pull down the building where the broadcast was made by Dukwe Onitiri Abiola proclaiming Democratic Republic of Yoruba. There are two buildings allegedly belonging to the leader of the agitators, and it was reduced to rubbles by the government. The video I saw, it hadn't been reduced to rubbles. It had been partially destroyed, but maybe it's now been reduced to rubbles. One was located at Tuye Yeshola Street, Shagari, Buluwaji area, and the other was at Oluyole local government area of Ibadan. Now, listen to this. While justifying the demolition exercise, the Commissioner for Lands, Housing, Survey, and Urban Development Williams Akinfumilayo said the two houses were demolished, having discovered that dangerous weapons were stocked there. What is the correlation between the two? If you discover that dangerous weapons were up there, you evacuate the weapons. You get the military to evacuate and take them for safekeeping. Then you seal the building. What is the correlation between dangerous weapons? And so, did you demolish the house with the dangerous weapons they are in? If that is the case, how come a, a popular uh, journalist, uh, Hamzat, had free access to the building, went round, went up, came down, there was a video that showed all that. That place should have been cordoned off for security. There's so many things you still, so many uh, 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 things you still need to do there. You could look for fingerprints, some things could be buried, in the wall. all kinds of things could be there. You destroyed it with the evidence. The, I don't understand the logic. I, I, I'd like uh, Mr. Akinfu Milayo, if there's any way, I'd, I'd love to have him on radio and, and, and have a discussion with him. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. And he said, this is what he's quoted to have said. Uh, he said that the demolition was carried out two days ago. We obtained a court order from the High Court on April 16 to demolish the building having got information that the Yoruba Nation agitators use the place. The building belongs to them. It houses dangerous weapons. I, I just don't get it. I, I just don't get it. That's a crime scene. You seal it off. For, for, for days and months ahead, you'll be combing for all kinds of little trickles of evidence that you can see. But it says that the government will give you, you peace of mind. The government is here to maintain security. We implore the residents to say something when they say something. We implore them to report any illegal and life-threatening activities to the government. If you destroy this to give peace of mind, then I, I'm, I'm sorry to say whoever is handling the, 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 the security of that state, the security advisor, he should handle his resignation. I'm not security trained, but, but I have common sense. And, and it tells me that when something like this happens, you preserve the area. You, in fact, you want to keep going there to reenact the scene to see what you will come up with. 
But as usual, we just demolish one way thinking. <sighs> Let's go to our next story. Um, page two of the Punch newspaper. 80 billion naira money laundering. FG places Yahaya below. On watch list, immigration alerts DSS. Nigeria, Nigeria is a beauty to watch and observe. And this doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the government itself. As a people, the way we do our things is funny. So what happens now? A former governor is holed up in his house. The EFCC come for him. He refuses to come down like a gentleman and submit himself. Had he come down, they'll take him to the headquarters, probably grant him bail in self-recognizance, and he will have his day in court. So he stays put. Not long after... His predecessor shows up. Now, the predecessor is supposed to have immunity. It's one of the things I'm going to be talking to Candy Johnson, um, discuss with Candy Johnson tomorrow, that what exactly does immunity, what exactly is it? Because I'm surprised that the EFCC couldn't, and they had a warrant, they couldn't move in and do the needful, in spite of the man's immunity. You give him a chance to, to excuse himself, and if he refuses to do so, you do the needful. Why do people think that because you have some so-called immunity, you can hold everybody to ransom? And we love this, we allow this thing happen repeatedly. We can did the same thing when he was governor in Port Harcourt. I forgot who he did it for. And what are we talking about here? We're talking about at least the most polite word we can use is misappropriation. Money missing. The people's money running into billions. So what? So that was what I was referring to yesterday when we were talking about Yoruba Nation. Or no, look at at governor level, you leave your state house to go and and, and, and evacuate your, your your predecessor, who is found wanting in situations concerning money that you would even need to operate. Now, now, does that make sense? Does that make sense? We must find a way of fine tuning. And that's what I, part of what I will discuss with the lawyer tomorrow. We must find a way of fine tuning these things. It certainly mustn't be an excuse that, oh, because in other times, even if the president shows up, shows up, they will tell him to please step aside. Because people have authority over certain things at certain times. Let me explain. I watched a movie about 30 years ago, The Towering Inferno. Now, in that movie, the, the you know, it was a new building was being launched. It was about one something floors. The mayor was at the last floor. The party was going on at the last floor. And the fire chief said he would like them to move to the ground floor. Now, the owner of the building, who is a close friend of the mayor, he, he, he didn't want to move. Because if they, how can you move a party currently? He did that's the end of the party. He was more concerned with his image. So the mayor now wanted to put, he now wanted to give the fire chief an order that I'm a mayor of this city. We are not moving. You know what the, you know what the fire chief told him? He said, where there is a fire, I'll, I'll trunk you. I've watched this movie a long time ago, but I haven't forgotten. He said, sir, he quoted it. He said, where there is a fire, I, I'll trunk everybody. So, I, 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 you know, I, I give the orders here. And the man, you know, he succumbed. So we need to do things like this. It's quite embarrassing to read in the front pages of a newspaper that a current governor went to evacuate his predecessor so that he could not be arrested. And then the following day, you now, you now declare him wanted. Hmm. Why couldn't I, I believe... What, 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 what do you think the FCC should have done? I don't know. I need Instead a, of declaring him wanted. I, I, don't know, I don't know. I need a lawyer to explain that. But I'm saying that the man, what the the uh, Bello was in his personal house and not government house. Mm -hmm. I, I would have thought that they have the authority to move in and do the needful, in spite of the fact that the governor is present. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, the report said that the police, the police people were there as well. And yes. The police people, uh, of of course, armed, and they were there to protect Yahya Bello. And the EFC rightly said that they had to. Um, be very diplomatic about the entire thing so that's, that it doesn't that's, cause that's what I'm saying. We need to enforce laws. That's why I used the example of that fire chief 
when they said, where there is a fire, I will thank you. The Attorney General has to come to explain to us who, who has a higher rank in this kind of situation. I've gone to arrest somebody in his own house and the governor happens to be present. It's not the government house. It's not the government house. It's not the government house. Mm -hmm. But our, our, our security people are in tatters. You know, they're always fighting themselves and, and we've turned the whole thing into a racket. People, they don't understand what it is to what it is to, 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 to ensure the whatever of your principal. The EFCC, the head of that EFCC unit, should have been able to make a call to the most senior policeman there mm. and tell you, you guys, get out of that place. Is even, even make a call to IG. IG, yes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm guessing that things, you know, happened pretty fast on, on that day. No, it didn't happen pretty fast. Let's call it speed is speed. It's because of the influence that Yayabelo himself has. People are sympathetic towards crime. Mm. We are sympathetic, even as a government. If you're a friend of the government, people, we are all sympathetic towards crime. We don't have that zeal. That's what it is. That's what it is. The EFCC have to be, have to be careful because how am I sure that the EFCC that went to arrest below themselves had not been compromised? How do you mean? Compromising with exactly things. what I said. I mean, I said, they went, they I, went I, there I, to arrest it, him. It is a suggestion. I'm not saying that I know, but part of what the feedback I get to myself is that could it have been that the EFCC who went to arrest the man were compromised and used that as an excuse? He escaped now. Well, he was with the governor. So the, the what? governor used his protective custody. Did the governor wrap? Uh, did the governor wrap? He was. He was in the governor's second, vehicle. Please, one second, please, sir. Sir, sir. Oh, 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 one second, please, sir. Did the governor wrap his bag around him? It was in the governor's vehicle. So the governor's vehicle cannot be stopped. Yes, it cannot. But be he stopped. moved from his house into the vehicle. If, even though CP Mbu stopped Amechi one time in Portaco. You see, we need to we need to get we need to get to the bottom and have some protocol regime that doesn't allow this to happen. Because we need to recognize that most of our leaders do not behave well in times like this. It's, it's, it's preposterous that what you are saying, in effect, is that a governor allowed a suspected criminal escape. Yes, that, that's it. Exactly. If I, if I, that's if I was what happened. Running, if I was running a newspaper, yeah. that's a headline I would use. That's what happened, Governor actually. helps a suspected criminal escape. Because the EFCC have alleged that he has committed a crime. That's right. Is that the kind of country we want to run? And then you went and got these young, innocent young people. I call them innocent because for the lure of money, they could have gotten themselves killed over nothing. Supposing a fight ensued between the EFCC yeah, yeah. and the governors, whatever, mm. with all these young boys caught <laughs> in between. Did you hear of any young Yayabelo amongst them? No. Did you hear of the son of the governor who was among them? No. Yet, you see, we're able to pick 50 young people, maybe some of them even well-educated, to go and say, hey, 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 for somebody who's suspected to have stolen billions of naira. Of impoverishing them. Of impoverishing them. The money that was supposed to use as scholarships and whatever to feed them. I, I, okay, even at the very worst, to provide palliatives. Which is itself is insulting. This 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 job is going to run some of us crazy if if, if we don't. And now and now it's now laughable. You now say that uh, Yayabelu is on the watch list. Immigration alerts DSS and so on and so forth. Who are you fooling? This thing is like a pantomime. It's like watching a play at night. This is this is entertainment. After he slipped under your very eyes, now you're not saying that you're putting him on the police immigration and the alerts and the DSS. We're alerting the DSS. I think, I think, I think EFCC did the right thing by allowing him to go. Well, given the circumstances, yes, but the system shouldn't have allowed it. I'm not blaming them. I mean, in fact, I, I'm saluting their, 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 their maturity. But the system should, it should strengthen that kind of authority in this kind of instance. Mm. If you run into Buckingham Palace, does that mean you are going to escape justice in the United Kingdom? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. If you run into number 10, ah, that one is even easier. It's the number 10 people that will catch you and hand you over. But even from a moral, shouldn't the governor be concerned 
Abbas is going to need these monies to rule. Do, do, do you think the, the Nigerian politicians care? No, they are not. They, they, I, I, we, we, need to, we need to even test the nationality of some of our politicians, whether they are right. true. Whether they are true Nigerians, because they can be so insensitive, they don't care, they don't give a damn. It's almost like they don't feel any connection. They don't feel any, how can you, a governor, ah, kill all day, get up from Kogi on, on, and drive down, leave governance? Abba. I can't imagine Mobolaji Johnson doing that. I can't, I can't imagine. I can't even imagine Bola Ige doing so. Or Professor Ambrose Ali, you, you know? I can't, I can't, that's why, that's why when, when we say that, a lot of our politicians are all these boys, quarters boys. That's part of what we're saying. It's a reflection of their background. How can I go and protect a suspected criminal as a governor? I should be able to say, sorry, sir, there's not much I can do. Hey, 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 you tell him one or go, go with them. He got up and, ah, no. It's all over, I'm telling you. It's <laughs> all over. Yeah, it's all over about the shouting. It's all over. We, the, we've, gone, we've gone far too down in the pits. But we are, we are the ones who, we all, during the elections, we saw all the signs. Even in the case of Kogi, we saw all the signs that this man was planted there by this, by this gentleman. We ignored them. Nobody was able to get up in Kogi states as an elder to gather people and say, look, let's do the right thing. That's what you get. Next story. Yeah. Let's move on to our next story quickly now. Um, we're going back to the Vanguard. We have this story here on page 10. A door commissioner stripped of chieftaincy title for disrespecting throne. I was happy when I saw this, that all is not lost. So who is the commissioner? Is the Edo State Commissioner for Arts, Culture, Tourism and Diaspora Affairs. Uyi Oduwa Malaka, and he was stripped of his honorary chief title of Uzuyari of Ozala Kingdom, conferred on her, she's a she, sorry, by the honorary of Ozala Kingdom in Onwa, West Local Government Area. What did she, what did she do? I'm wait, I'm, I can't wait to hear. Okay, we'll continue on Monday. No way. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> she was accused of misconduct okay. and disrespect to the king by asking him to meet her in the car when she drove into the palace on April 12, 2024. This is how far down we have gone. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. You see, when I, when I talk about these things, uh, uh, some of the, you know, the upbringing and personal of these people, but I don't blame her. I don't blame her. In Yoruba land here, a, 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 an Oba left his palace to go, I, I saw the video. He left his palace to go and visit one big chief in uh, Banana Island. He was received at the gates, at his gates, by a lesser minion in the man's household, who took the Oba first on top of the cars, and he was looking at all the cars with his mouth wide open. Hmm. And he was finally met at the door. They escorted the Oba at the door of the big chief. And I said to myself, when I saw the video, I almost wept that our society is completely falling apart. It's completely falling apart. My Oba is coming to my house and I've not met him at the junction of the road. When we talk about respect, it's to uphold these institutions. You, do you understand? Mm. It's not the person. Mm. Mm. It's to uphold... The man graciously waited in the sitting room for the Oba to come and meet is it him. A, this is the fault of the man now. Let's let's talk about let's leave, let's leave this story for now. Is this the fault of the man now or yeah. the custodian, the Oba himself? Jack in Tabon, let that, me let me Tabon in this case so, so that my people can understand. There's too much to range. The both of them. <laughs> <laughs> both of them. The Oba himself was he, 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 he didn't only God knows what he went to do. One very pompous man there, you know, very arrogant man. I, I don't want to mention his name. Very arrogant. He did it to humiliate the man. Maybe he came to beg him for money. Hmm. Hmm. But he forgot that what he was doing was to the people of that town hmm. and to the institution. And whether you like it, because he is also a chief, whether you like it or not, whether you believe in these things, the gods notice these things. 
Things are going bad in Nigeria because we are not doing the things properly that we should be doing. Please, please, uh, per permit me, permit me to yes. disagree a bit. I, I would not want to blame the man. Which man? The chief. I would want to blame the Oba solely. And Oba in council, whoever it is in council yes. of the Oba, because um, they have sold their birthright for money. They have I agree. Sold their birthright. I, I agree. They completely. have sold their people. But but you also need as a, as a full grown adult, you also need to show respect where it is due, irrespective of. If your, you want to respect somebody, it, it, and the person said, "Don't worry, chief, I will come." <laughs> oh, don't come. <laughs> no, I, I still don't. No, no, no. please don't come. Let no, me. Let I, me I, come. I, okay, I, let, let's come and carry. See, oh, sheriff. chief Agbabi, I will come. Se sheriff, you see, what I'm saying is a bit. How would I put it now? Do you know that because of these arguments that I have, somebody very close to me believed. He said that it looks as if you have become an idol worshiper. <laughs> <laughs> but what he don't know, <laughs> which is not. Which, some very close to me, or extremely close to me, said. Uh, uh, so, but at, uh, there was something going on, and then uh, uh, he, he said something like, uh, "Since you have become uh, this, 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 you have changed, and I don't want your bad luck to." Go. I said, "What kind of nonsense is this?" People should. Can you go to the other who? Then burn anybody to go to the Obas Palace in Benin and say you mm. want him to come and meet you at the gate. Mm. No, and, and so sometimes people bring things upon themselves. I believe that no matter how silly and idiotic the other person is, you should do right. And this man I'm talking about is exposed, he's wealthy, he's educated, but he's arrogant. Mm. So and he knew he knew the man, so he first of all took him on. They took can you believe it? And did a video of it. I saw it on YouTube, and it went on tour of the cars, and the other with his mouth open was looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's our son. Our son is doing well. No, no, but when we look, so I'm happy that this. I'm happy that this happened. A statement by the palace said that Omotari ordered the immediate revocation of her title to serve as a deterrent. Don't think because you're a commissioner, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the intention of desecrating the respected throne. Uh, and so she she was she was uh, said that another title Ozenwoya of Ozala Kingdom given to another person was revoked and now an exclusive preserve of Ozala free bonds or whatever it is. I, I think that's another case entirely. But I'm glad about what this traditional we, we must we must also uphold our tradition. That's right. That's right. Irrespective of our religion. We must uphold our tradition. A again, th there's a reason why the politicians have deliberately and intentionally whittled yes. down the powers yes. of yes. the traditional rulers. Yes. There's a reason why in the Nigerian constitution, they have the superior power yes. over the traditional institution. Should we be advocating for the traditional institutions, for instance, mm. to be elevated to some certain powers? It's a bit dangerous in a democracy because they are not voted for. Mm. That's it. That's, it's a bit dangerous. People don't understand that a local government chairman can fire another. Yeah. Let the local government chairman in Ife go and fire the on there. Let's see what will happen. Mm. Put your phone query. When government, when they want to ridicule them, yeah. the, 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 you know, I, I, it was... They know I, what to do. I think it was the previous one of Ife and the Emma of Kano who traveled, the previous ones who traveled one time. It was a local government chairman mm -hmm. that gave them a query. But the governor who tried something in Benin many, many years, not this Oba, the previous Oba, many, many years ago, I put dotted lines. Go and find out what happened to him. Falashi. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that one successfully. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Falashi. <laughs> Let's go to Daily Trust. Prices of paddy drop in states. Well, good news for everybody. At least there's something nice to talk about this morning. This is from the Daily Trust um, Northern paper, um, as it were. And it says that prices of paddy are beginning to come down in grain markets. Uh, in the last three years, a bag of paddy was sold at between 9,000 and 20,000 for 100 kg. However, between the last quarter of 2023 and this year, it reached about 55,000 and 70,000, depending on the location. Now, it, it, it says that um, 
at Al Majiri and Solo Market, the hub of rice production in the state, paddy is currently being sold for between 43,000 and 45,000. It is also being sold at between 42,000 and 45,000. Um, so we have that. Um, a rice trader said that if the Niger Republic is open fully for traders to bring in their paddy, this would further crash the paddy price. Mm. The price has been dropping almost every week in the last one month now. Now, Beautiful. this is music to the ears. Also, yeah. Unconfirmed, um, unconfirmed stories are saying that the cost of cooking gas is also gradually coming down. Mm -hmm. Farmers and dealers who spoke said the price now ranges from between 39,000 and 42,000. And so it's good news here um, in the areas of rice. It also talks about the price of foreign rice that has dropped in Kano. The Daily Source reporter in Kano reports that prices of rice and some other imported food items have decreased in various markets. Findings reveal that the price of Thailand rice has decreased from 87,000 and above to 60, 66,500 for a 50 kg bag in the past few days. Um, so we have some, some good news there for you. Uh, th there are talks about the president opening um, la for land borders. The I thought um, they were opened. Uh, there are there are some things that I can that can move in and out. There are some things mm -hmm. that can't move in and out. And um, I over I read somewhere where the custom CG was talking about their negotiation with um, the uh, land with Bene, for instance. Yes. Um, that they're planning to discuss, you know, with their Bene people, so that because according to him, the idea behind the closure initially was to have people move their import through our ports. About they, they are congested, you know, with very co and very slow and very expensive. So what I'm thinking is maybe I mean I, I want to ask uh, whether you think even if we want to make money through the land borders, mm -hmm. let's say we want to you know re return to people bringing things from the land borders because mm -hmm. it was saying that they are planning to make sure that they work with their but no camp, uh, um, um, counterparts to ensure people don't smuggle anymore. Um, no, small, okay, I can answer that very quickly. Smuggling is a part of part of our life now. Mm. We, we shouldn't run away from it. Yeah. I'm not saying we should encourage it, but it's part of our life. It's what makes the economy go around. And I'm glad this government, uh, at least, is seen to be making efforts to face the reality mm. on ground. On because ground. that's the reality. On ground. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> that's, 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 it, it, okay, because in terms of, uh, 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 for example, when you vaccinate people, uh, what I'm told, I'm not a medical person, when you vaccinate people sometimes, is you put the, the, uh, the, the vaccine mainly has the so-called disease so that the body can build whatever. Smuggling is part of what makes our economy go round. At the lower end, especially. Even though it's illegal. Even it's though it's illegal. illegal. Completely so, illegal. So what you do is, what you do is, you work with percentages. Allow about 60%. Because it makes, it makes, do you understand? Another thing I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to think, which I hope is what is happening, is the government needs to stop paying concentration on figures and mm. inflows, rather concentration on human lives. How do you mean? Government keeps talking about inflows, wanting to collect duty here, collect duty there. Human lives are being jeopardized in this process, economically. You, you understand? We need, to, we need to have some kind of uh, uh, um, um, balance. Look at the cost of so many imported things now. It can be brought down if you relax the duty in certain areas. Some food items, mm. medicals. Yeah, we have, to. we have to go. Yeah, we really must go now. Okay, we must mm. go now. Yeah. There goes, thank you. We're, we're handing you back to Kofi now with the continuation of the morning course prize. Stay here, please. Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.